With your departure, I would rise in the morning, but would never shine. I would shine with the dusk, but no one really wants to shine then, because a shine thusly means one shines as much as the dark. Tried a friendly face, but that only means one is slowly desperate and confused, even stressed in scissor friends, ones that will smile to your demise while parasiting on your aura. These are Jezebel souls hold on to your soul, and if you're ever to go soul searching, remember to take your spiritual compass and a string tied to your heart. It lets you find your way back home and keeps your wits pure and untainted to face your enemy at your best point. But, but the enemy does not rest and works best at your rest and loves your unawares and relishes your lazy carelessness. There, there are those who pray for you and those who pray on you. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Yes, hello and welcome, Isabel. If you can allow me uh, to, yes, thank you. Uh, hello, welcome everybody. Um, welcome back and thank you, Hape Mokele, for that wonderful opening prompt uh, to uh, start off this final day of Pace and Tangled. My name is Erwin Maas. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Pace, together with Nike Jonah and Ricardo Pichu is here as well. And we have our entire PACE team uh, working uh, tirelessly this week to make all of this happen. So I really want to thank them again, and we will do so a few more times today. Uh, welcome back, everybody, um, uh, both here on Facebook, in HowlRound, on the site. I know we've had a lot of people engaging on Facebook and also uh, on our site actually watching. So welcome to you all. Uh, it's really great. Uh, it's been four already amazing days. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your enthusiastic responses. Uh, and thank you, artists, for your courage to present on this platform that I know your work was not originally all created for. Um, we have some housekeeping at the end of this session, but I really want to start off uh, with the panel soon. So uh, just remember that at the end of the panel, we have our final creative intervention as well. So don't immediately leave. The creative interventions have been just amazing and so different each day. And I'm sure today is going to be a complete different one again. So with that said, Karima, please take it away. Uh, thank you so, so much, Erin. It's such a pleasure being here. I'm just trying to get my video. Ah, that's it. I'm here now. And um, it's such a pleasure to be here and such an honor. And um, I am very, very excited, a little bit nervous as uh, what I would like for to happen in this space is really to experiment, um, to co-create a space together and to come out of here thinking, oh, that surprised me. Um, I was not expecting that. And if we are able to do that, well, this, is a, this will become a creative process. And this is what it's all about today. Today we're exploring from disruption to disobedience. And we are going on our last day of Pace Entangled to Stories Without Borders, to leaving silos, to leaving gen gen uh, genres, to leaving uh, dogmas. But what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean? Well, when we leave, where do we go? And, and when we go there, what happens? And this is what we would love to, exp to, um, to experience as well as to hear the different story of artists who found the courage to do that, to go into the borderlessness, to the silolessness, um, and, to, and to the ocean that do not have shores, where all the possible becomes. Um, I am a Temkin facilitator. The word Temkin is a word in Arabic, and it coheres potential, possibility, possible and place. 
And this is what I'm hoping that I will be able to facilitate today in this place for this beautiful, amazing energy, all this potential to become a possibility and to open new possibles for all. So I'd just like to reflect and share with you my resonance very quickly about the theme. I was taken back by the disruption, disobedience, the, 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 the prefix, this. That means apart, asunder, away, reversing with force, forcefully separating. To suddenly going to the field of the borderless, the shoreless, Suddenly there is movement, there is a flow. What does that mean? How do we do that? And how can we do that together? So from the this, we go into the trans, the trans of transcending, which means going beyond, going through, changing thoroughly into transverse. This is what we're gonna try to experiment today, today together. And I'm gonna ask you all, and we have right now 34 participants in this, co-creators in this space, if we could have just one minute where we could put on our videos so that we can see each other. Thank you so much. Okay, now suddenly, there is meaning. We can see our faces, our expressions, our questions in the eyes and the smiles. For some it's morning, for maybe some of you it's evening. I, um, when I heard about the theme, when Irving proposed it to me, it immediately took me to the work, the philosophical work of François Julien, who's a contemporary French philosopher, who in order to reapprehend uh, West, Western thought went to the Eastern thought. And when he went to the Eastern thought, he did not compare, he did not see the difference, he did not see the similarities, but rather explored the in-between. And this is what we're going to do here today, together explore the in-between. But to do that, I'd like you to reflect during this moment where our videos are on, Please, each one, and in your own creative process, no matter what you do, where you do it, and how you do it, if there was one word that distills that creative process, what would that be? If there's one word that distills, that brings together, that is the confluence of all your different expressions through art, what would that word be? And please do not hesitate, do share if you wanna share. If you don't wanna share, keep it to yourself. Because this is what I ask our friends from this panel, five, wonderful artist that I'm very privileged to have met and I'm very grateful to Pacing Tangle to create this opportunity, who have the courage, the love to go there, to go to the shoulders. I've asked them after they shared with me their story, can you tell me one word? And I would like to introduce you to each one with that word. But today what we're asking from all of you in this co-creation process is not for questions. Although if you do, please do not hesitate. Share your questions, but rather for your resonances. What is the resonance to what you're hearing? Connect that resonance to your word, to what you have distilled and why. Also, explore what surprises you. Because if we are able to allow ourselves to be surprised, the kind of surprise that we have when we are five years old, where we no longer, we don't see things through genres when we're five years old. We don't see things through dogmas and we don't see things through silos. So let's go back to the, our five-year-old. What surprises you in this process? Please share your resonance and your surprise. Because when we start sharing our surprises, this is an indicator. This is something that calls for attention. This is something when we all bring our attention to it. The unthought of can surface, the non-created can take shape. So without more uh, introduction than this, I'll let you reflect, take 20, 15 seconds in silence, just to think about that word and please share it.
Thank you very much. I will invite you all, and as we had the pleasure to see each other's faces, I will invite you all to switch your cameras off and um, ask for Bronwyn Lace from Botswana, who told me that her word was collapse. And we will start with a collapse. And from the word, we will go to the story. And from these words that you have shared with us, maybe a new story will emerge. So Bronwyn, please welcome. Thank you, Karima. It's wonderful to be here. Um, while I am born and very much love my uh, birth country of Botswana and Khabarone, I am, um, my heart is with South Africa and it has been my home for most of my life. Recently, in the last few months only, um, I have found myself living in Vienna, Austria. And um, I, uh, I see myself moving back and forward, uh, but that remains to be seen as to how possible it is in our brave new world. I think I'd like to start with sharing a minute that um, I've put together from a much longer performance that was used as a way to launch the first season and introduce a space that we are collectively creating still on an ongoing basis in downtown Johannesburg. The space is called the Center for the Less Good Idea. The name is derived from a Tswana proverb that was translated by the great soul Plaiki from Setswana. And the translation has this lovely cumbersome awkwardness to it when it is in English, which is, if the good doctor can't cure you, find the less good doctor. And so I'm gonna give you a minute of this inaugural performance by the founder of the center, William Kentridge. And um, we can speak to it throughout the sessions um, after that. Now there comes a battle between the first starting idea, which let it be said is a good idea, maybe even an excellent idea, a great big light bulb of an idea. The fragment we glimpsed at the edge of the work is just a brief flare in of a match. Oops. There's a battle between this big lamp and the trace of the match. But often we have to put out the big lamp and follow the trace of that match. What is a fragment at the periphery comes to the center. The less good idea is invited in. Doubt, not knowing, uncertainty are given a safe space. There is a need to drown out thoughts to let another thinking take place. The sentence, put out the big lamp and follow the trace of the match, just stays with me. Yeah, uh, I think that the recognition in artistic processes when one is in a state of making that uh, the first ideas that catalyze us into the making often uh, when they meet the real world whether it's on the stage or onto a canvas or into composition and, and the playing of a music parts of them begin to dissolve to crack to collapse and if we're allowed to view the collapse and the cracks and the fissures that emerge, uh, there is, for many artists, this recognition that that is where the magic, the surprise, the beauty, the humanity lies. Your mind's eye has met the world and the world has responded. And so this space in downtown Johannesburg is all about that. It's about holding those processes for artists, acknowledging that the artistic impulse and the recognition in the room when we are together and working collectively without particular disciplines in mind, but with ourselves present, uh, we're able to manifest things that surprise us. Uh, and so that's the premise of the center. 
And, you know, you can talk a long time about what it is, but I'm very honored to be here together with the fellow delegates from connections across the African continent to discuss how these sorts of spaces can shift our, our lives and our, our homes. Thank you, Bronwyn. Can, can I, will, I will ask um, Fatih or um, Julia or um, um, Oscar, just to take it as you feel it, um, whatever resonates from you, and, um, and just start from the word that you shared. And if you want to change that word, just change it, just maybe say why, and, um, and share the story of your own process. Well, I, I want to say something, Karina. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, because uh, what Bronwyn told about told us about collapse, and it just reminded me that my first, the first plates that I designed actually uh, came when my body disrupted. Actually, uh, I felt very ill, and uh, that was a time. Uh, I was leaving England and coming back to, to, to Senegal. And uh, uh, as I said, my body disrupted and I started drawing. There was nothing else I could do uh, apart from drawing. So uh, that was uh, uh, how I channeled uh, my creative expression and my recovery. Uh, so out of collapse, uh, I was able uh, to, to have a new life in Senegal. So it reminded me I'm quite emotional because it was something quite uh, uh, deep that out of collapse, uh, one can be reborn, one can grow and one can do uh, something uh, new and amazing, actually. Uh, yeah, so... That is something I wanted to share. I, I didn't plan to say that, but yeah, it just reminded me that out of collapse, something can, uh, can emerge. And this is why you said uh, two days ago that you started your process as an accident. And now I understand what you mean by the yes. accident. Yes, it was an accident. I wasn't meant to design tableware anyway. So yeah, it was definitely uh, by accident. And what about memory? That was your word, Fatih, memory. Can you tell us the yes, story? Be yes, because my inspiration is drawn from a memory. Uh, uh, and most of the time I, 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 I design based on what I have experienced in the past. Uh, for example, if I take the first collection called Nguka, it is a Senegalese hairstyle that I was seeing when I was growing up. Uh, around me. Uh, so uh, uh, memory is very important. It is an inspiration for me. It is how I channel my uh, creative expression. I, I always, whether it is uh, uh, plates actually or food, because uh, I'm quite engaged here uh, in food as well, local products. Uh, so uh, I always try to, to draw from what I've seen in the past or what I have experienced. For example, here, if you see Les Sappers, the hairstyle, these are hairstyle I had uh, when I was growing up. So uh, to me, it is very important to, to remember because uh, I think when you remember, uh, you can acknowledge and you can also uh, bring consideration uh, and memory is really definitely uh, my main inspiration, yeah. There is a uh, very ineffable elegance that, uh, and, uh, and the, the, what my resonance to this is, is really um, the memory being on the plate, the memory feeding um, and tra traveling um, through food through l'art de vivre, which is kind of contemporary, which is tableware. Uh, I don't know who would like to come in with their resonance, with their surprise. I invite everyone just to share with us the resonances and the surprises to what they hear. Just, um, I don't know if Oscar or um, Julia would like to share. I know that um, one of our friends, Arif, is still not here with us, unfortunately. 
Um, but we're very much looking forward to have his uh, to have him here with us soon. Ah, I can okay. see him. Got him on here. Oh, wonderful, okay. Arif. This is so wonderful. Marhaba. <laughs> Marhaba, Arif. Um, Oscar, you wanted to to go ahead with your so Oscar, your you, your word was intersection. And is that intersection something that was there? was something that came through a transcending process. And can you tell us this, share this? Yes, yeah. hi everyone. My name is Oscar and I'm based in Nigeria and um, I run an innovation lab at the intersection of arts and tech. Um, so with the word intersection, um, looking back many years ago when I was somewhere around 10, 11, I've always had that artistic side. So I used to draw I used to paint, um, I used to do sculpture, you know, as a child. Um, but then, you know, the pressures of life and different people telling you what you're supposed to do um, kind of tilted me more towards the technology space. But even at that, um, I found that, you know, I was good at that also. And um, I really enjoyed doing technology. So I always said, you know, in the future, I will in, you know, explore that intersection of arts and technology. And um, it just kind of evolved over time. I you know, started talking to artists and then I came um, in contact with Ars Electronica. Even though I was doing tech, somehow they work around technology and new media and things like that. So um, my process usually is, you know, is to explore how that intersection births new things. And just from the festival we had last year, um, we found that even things like marketing, things like branding, things like um, poetry, for example, even fashion, um, all has that intersection where technology can influence fashion, um, technology can influence design, arts can influence branding. And these are beautiful ways, you know, when, when, when we, we have people like Leonardo da Vinci, right, who was a technologist, he did technology, he was an artist, but again, going back to the theme of silos, right, when did we get to this standpoint or to this point where everything is in silos? Well, if you can comment on art if you're not. So um, to me, that's the word that really resonates in, in at, you know, at the back of my mind. And I am always looking for ways to collaborate with, you know, diverse groups, um, poets, writers. Um, for example, we're also working with um, a writer to do short stories that are animated and laced with interactivity. Of course, that interactivity comes with technology. So. Um, so these are the things that uh, are, you know, resonate with me and I'm excited to be here, excited to learn, you know, from your community as well. And um, yeah, it's made pretty much a learning process for me right now. Wonderful. And uh, I would like to, to see if uh, Julia and Arif are ready to share in resonance with what Oscar said. Uh, Things seeming, meeting, the unseemingless meeting um, um, and new intersections. Um, Julia, her word was yeah. louder. And uh, Arif, his word was love. And I love how both of them come together. Louder love. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead. Yeah, if I can just start to say that um, I'm, uh, I'm Julia and I'm a French sound artist based in Utrevita, Tasmania in Australia. And I think sharing experiences and meeting new people, and especially when I went to South Africa, it was about organizing a radio relay for poetry in the street. And the people I work with, like Tutukani uh, and the poets there, really gave me confidence in my words. 
because I'm all into voicing people and be louder, but I'm also very shy and I can't um, take responsibility sometimes for the words I'm sharing. So when I met TK, uh, he, he gave me the opportunity to express myself. And then I met uh, Arif with TK that you can see on the screen on the left. And then Arif asked if we could be uh, TK and I jury for his uh, new uh, Islam during COVID, uh, which was an online Islam uh, competition in support of uh, young voices in the world. We had, I think, five different uh, countries. So yeah, that's, I guess, uh, sharing silos makes it better seeds. Arif, if you wanna say something. So Arif is uh, often a ghost on the online network. His uh, connection is not very stable, but his words are pretty powerful. Um, so I was hoping that, hoping that he would um, impro improvise a little Islam for us in three languages because he speaks um, well of in French and English, and I think a bit of Spanish, actually. Um, and this is a picture of my first project I did in South Africa, and what all those people uh, gave me uh, confidence to, to share uh, words that we, we all seen in the streets of Bloemfontein, which was about lost lover and uh, free abortion and um, larger penises. And from that, we made, we published a book uh, co-produced co with TK and all those poets. And that book is then online for free on the website air, air, um, airwaves.com.za. And through that book, then it um, carried uh, opportunities to share stories and meet different people. And because it's a poetry book, uh, it was also passed on Arif, for example, and uh, I think that's also how we could connect through different content, which is really primar primarily not yeah. my my my, um, my medium. My my first medium is sound, uh, but oh, yeah. So that's me in on top of the mountain. I love to dress up. Um, can we hear you, uh, Arif? Hello, hello. Good. Silence. So I would just say that uh, Arif is his artistic name, that his name is Al Haji, Sheikh Anath Niang. And Arif in Arabic means the knower. So I hope, are you here? Can you, are you with us? Well, maybe Julia. Uh, oh. Yes, hi. Arif. Can you hear? Can you? No? It's okay. We'll give it a bit more time. Julia, why louder? That was your word. Uh, that's right. That, that's what I'm trying to be, I guess. I'm trying to be louder, but I oh, can't no, be louder not. by myself. Sure, I need uh, to yeah, work with other that. people. Oh, excellent oh, yeah. disruption. Oh, I think Arif is on or oh, somebody else is on. So yes, maybe if we could uh, <laughs> mute. Um, can we mute? Okay, great. I, I will ask you if you don't mind, Julia, if you can take that, come back to this. Yes, yes. just louder, louder because welcome, it's, welcome. <laughs> that's excellent. I feel it's like an automatic, um, I'm gonna be louder <laughs> than you. Who, whoever <laughs> is trying to stop me to talk, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm practicing. I'm practicing live in front of all of you. My uh, louder voice. Is it clear enough? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and also because for, uh, English is not my first language, I really struggled for a while to articulate my thoughts in another language. Um, so that was a, a, a big challenge for me. And when I was only speaking French or doing French uh, sound tracks or radioscapes, I would barely use words because I was too scared of the 
meaning of the power of world words. Um, but the people I met in South Africa really uh, showed me how they, they were brave and, and take control of their words and their messages. And me, I was like, okay, great, that's fantastic because I can provide the, the medium of radio relay. So I convinced four radio communities to work together to be able to carry those voices, those brave voices uh, in the streets and on air. Um, yeah, that was my um, big learning from um, new friends, really. Oh, is Arif on? On and off, off and on. Yes, I'm here. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, you can talk now. Julia. Oh, great. Okay, good. Hello, everybody. Hello, Pierre Amatnia, my name. I'm from Senegal. I'm the founder of the School of Poetry Africa. Uh, we aim to develop the ideology of creative expression within the children of Senegal and eventually all throughout Africa. Our goal is targeting the young, is to help the children to develop early on the courage to stand up for what they believe and openly share with the inactors of change for the betterment of their environment. I'm a lover, a Sufi, a mystic poet. I facilitate a workshop. I worked with Julia recently uh, during the Islam, during the, this pandemic. Uh, and we still uh, have that connection. So we so happy to be here that you put us uh, through our face. You hear me? Do you hear me? Hello? Yes, Perfect. we can hear you. Yeah, we heard you very well. And, and grateful. I'm not disrupted. Okay. No, that's wonderful. We heard it very Thank clearly. You. That is amazing. That is amazing. Arif, can you go to love? That was your word. That is, still, that's, that is the confluence of all your work. Can you go there to, to share your story a bit more? Yes. Yes, you know, love uh, is what uh, inspired me. And when we say love, we mean everything. You know, when you do something, you don't love it, you can't go far. If you love that, you will go. That's what makes you keep going. So when I say love, is for me, God, because God is the love. Because everything you see, in Arabic, they say Zahir is everything you see. And Batin is everything you can't see. And the first was nothing before anything here. That's Owl. And is the what? Hmm. I'm afraid we're struggling a bit with the sound. Is the source. And if we're struggling with a the, bit with the sound, could, could you go back a little bit to that idea? We, we, we can't hear you very well anymore. Can hear me? Okay. Do you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Yes, okay. yes, yes. That, so our vision is love. When I say love, love is uh, beyond... Uh, Love, like uh, we used to uh, qualify what is love, but love, uh, genderless, borderless, limitless, whatever you see. But we start uh, from here. What we love actually is Africa. We want to see uh, Africa unite. And we start with the youth. Because we want to change the future, we will focus to the youth because they are the leaders of tomorrow. So the love is, uh, is a vision. 
And our vision actually is to establish in each country within Africa. We've lost you again. Ah, and I think you might even have left for a little while. Um, but you will come back. We know that. And your love is staying here with us. So I will. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, now we hear you. Okay. Um, it's 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 a bit difficult. Uh, and if I think your connection is not very good, maybe if you try to leave to come back, would that help? I don't know. I'm going to ask Oscar, who's a technology why, uh, savvy, <laughs> would that would be helpful or not? Yeah, he he could just try to log in and log uh, log out and log back in, and let's see how that works. Or try a different connection. Okay. Um, in this part of the world, bandwidth is, you know, typical challenge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would really love um, to, 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 to take it from there. Um, each one of you, how does this resonate? And how, what surprises surprise you and what you heard from the different artists from this panel? Um, um, from, so what, what um, how, what have you discovered in that process of le leaving the silos? What have you discovered first about yourselves? What have you discovered about your art? It's like when you leave, maybe the, the space or the art, the um, creative process that you used to, and you come back to it. What did you rediscover in that process? What did you see in that intersection that surprised you? Um, so about yourself, about your creative process. And um, what does that tell you? What did you learn from this? Okay, uh, can I jump in? Am I allowed to? Please, this is what I'd uh, love for this to flow, <laughs> not, not to... Yeah, so prior to setting up our lab with Ars Electronica, um, you know, I hadn't worked really closely with artists. Um, coming from a technology background, um, I, we are very structured you know, and process-oriented. And everything goes, you know, in one straight line. Um, but from, you know, attending festivals with Ars Electronica and working with them, I started to see an entirely different um, way of experimentation and way of working. Like, you know, the answer is never clear. Let's just go and see what comes out. Um, so initially I struggled with that, but, you know, moving on and working with more artists, um, I, I realized this is... You, you really need to take a step back and just allow the artist, you know, flow in that rhythm and create. So one of the things I learned, um, I wouldn't say surprised, but I learned that um, creative process needs to be very experimentative um, and bear very evolutionary, so to speak. Um, the next thing that I realized is that ultimately everyone just wants to express themselves whether it's through that um, blend of technology and arts or visual arts or through music or through sound, the core end goal is um, expression, um, expressions to address social issues or to disrupt or to cause a stare or whatever it is, uh, even if it's through fashion. So those are the, the two main um, intersections or core thoughts um, that I, I have taken away in the past couple of years. We, we started the lab in 2018 and we had the first artificial intelligence in arts um, conference here in Abuja where Horst Hopner, who is the director of Arts Electronica actually came um, to this lab here. And it was really interesting to express new ways of finding new ways to express arts, you know, and things like that. So. Um, it's been an adventure. I think that's the last component for me because um, over time, this initially this was very new in the whole art space. Um, but I've grown to love, you know, working with artists, collaborating with artists, and finding um, new possibilities, like you say. And then that breaks us all out of this silo and this quote-unquote cage 
um, and stereotypes um, that you have to do certain things certain ways. And what did you discover about yourself? Mm, that I'm an artist at heart. <laughs> ah, <laughs> what a wonderful discovery. <laughs> that we are all artists at heart. Um, yeah, I think pretty much that's, that's one of the things I found out. Like, even just, I mean, everybody sings. We sing in the shower, for example. So um, that whole separation that, oh, no, 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 I'm not an artist. No, 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 you are in this other space. That's why that word intersection comes alive to me always. Like, um, art is at the core of our souls. And um, I think more, the more artists reach out to other genres and other fields to collaborate and the more other fields um, venture into the arts, that is, you know, it's gonna create new possibilities. And then really those silos and those um, barriers and borders um, would be crushed. I don't know who would like to take it from here and resonate with what Oscar just shared. Yeah. Marvin? Yes. Yeah, I, I wanted to resonate with Fatih's work as she was speaking about that accident, which was clearly a, a, a very happy uh, result. Um, but as I as I look at the work and I see this combination of, of delicacy and beauty, but also on things that we use and touch every day that are so intimate in their, in their use because we drink out of them, we bring them to our lips, and yet they are radical because they are representing uh, people who are often made voiceless by um, the very structures and organizations and organizational um, languages that we rely upon and so to see the back of a, of a child's head done with that same kind of delicacy and intimacy and at the same time it be so deeply political and radical is, is, is a surprise even though it is my lived reality and within the own, my own experience of being what we came to call the Anamatua at the Center for the Less Good Idea, because instinctually I wasn't interested in being a director. I had a, I had a sense as an artist myself that a kind of hierarchical approach to creating momentum within an arts space was one that didn't function. It's one that causes often, I feel, a rift between the kind of administrative organizational structure of, of holding art and then the making. And where the artist and the, and the creators are not speaking to the structures that hold it and vice versa. And, um, and so what was very interesting for me to note, uh, just in my own role there, was that there were parts of my my personality, the, my, the fact that perhaps that I'm a woman, that I'm a mother, there were tools that I use in my life as a partner and as a nurturer of intimacy, of holding, of checking in, of loving, of a multiplicity, of a, of a recognition of the generativeness of play and that it looks like chaos from the outside. But when you walk into one of our spaces when, when we're in the thick of workshopping towards a season, it appears to be chaos. And yet within it, there is deep resonance and connectivity on what surprises us and what is an interesting path to follow. And that we don't need to have people dictating what the theme of the work is. Um, that when artists are allowed to explore with one another and themselves and their impulses are given the benefit of the doubt, there is enormous momentum. So the idea that productivity comes from structure and comes from rules, I believe is false. And this is what I've I'm learning again and again. And I have to say that it's not, it's not something that sits as a, as a learned and a ticked fact for me, uh, because our education and certainly anybody I think who was 
born into and raised on a colonized land, our education and everything about the way in which um, the systems have been created is about a, di a division. And it's about a creating of silos and disciplines. It's about a specializing. Um, it's about a limiting, uh, you know, and I, and I, I even come to something that was said in my own home growing up, which is, you know, don't burn the candle at both ends. Um, don't, uh, don't, don't be, be an expert in one thing. Um, and uh, I have to say that I think we generally as individuals have such capacity for the multiplicity and the complexity um, of, of where things are right now. Um, and just to see Fatih, your work and remember the, how powerful that intimacy and that delicacy is and that that is the revolution right now for me. Thank you, Bonwin. Thank you. I just wanted to say that, uh, yes, of course, I depict Africa, I depict my people with elegance, but uh, there is something uh, that has a deeper meaning for me because beyond that elegance, I use porcelain as, um, as a canvas, as an artist would use a canvas to depict uh, uh, to depict something. To me, it is about telling stories, our untold stories, and bridging gaps as well, uh, sharing unfamiliar stories, uh, but using uh, unfamiliar uh, materials such as porcelain, because porcelain he's here was basically used to mimic uh, 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 Europeans, uh, and most of the time people were not using them, they were locking them in cabinets and waiting for that special moments uh, uh, to use them. And for me, uh, there is no, every day is a special moment actually. And, and, and you have to celebrate and celebrate by depicting Africa uh, and sometimes by shocking as well. For example, if you see that hairstyle uh, uh, just put on the cups and inside the cups, something that has been considered as unflattering, not beautiful. Today, if you see most black women, they wear weaves, uh, they hide their hair uh, because they've been told that it's not beautiful. And I have decided to put it on the cup and inside the cup for people not to avoid it, but actually confront it uh, because it is part of human beings. It is part of us. So to me, uh, beyond, again, uh, that elegance, it is also about uh, uh, reflection for people to reflect with unfamiliar stories, but also with unfamiliar uh, uh, material. Uh, so yeah, that's really uh, what I can say beyond the elegance, uh, what I am aiming for to, to open up that discussion and to bridge gaps uh, between people and have some sort of convergence. I'm not sure if everybody uh, he heard me. We heard you very well, Fatih. Thank you so much. And I, I love this resonance, actually, in how it's moving and flowing from one, one to the other. Uh, it just started with Oscar talking about we are all artists. I discovered the artists from within. So within, from within and everyone, there is this artist to, um, to uh, the resonances that we're having right now now in the chat talking about trusting the process, surrendering to the process, letting the process reveal, which is very much what you've been saying, Bronwyn. Let us let, let things reveal and come to the surface um, without defining you know, ahead what it's gonna be without putting it in a box. Um, there is a, another resonance which was talking about the self-trust uh, and, and what you're bringing in, Fati, which is reflecting, reflecting about um, the art and the process of creating that art, but also how that art um, creates this intimacy, Bronwyn, as you say, creates this in new intimacy. And the intimacy, the word is so interesting because it's going to the innermost, but with the other. There's no intimacy without the other. So we let someone come in or something come in 
that made us discover ourselves. This is so beautiful. And so, and I would like to go to Julia. Julia, who, who is fascinated by sound and how to embody what is not heard, how to make it louder. And how do we bring, connect all that work you do um, with Harif, um, but also with what has been shared right now. And, and I would add another question that's being um, asked in the chat is what is the challenge? We've been talking a lot about the courage, but what is the challenge? So Julia, first, how do you connect your work uh, with what we're hearing right, right here? Well, it resonates very well with something I've learned uh, in South Africa, because somebody one day told me that I have trust issues. And I was like, and they say, you trust too much, Julia. You trust too much. And I, I never realized that before, actually. But because I trust probably too much, I can meet other people in a very generous space. And it allow, I guess, in, our, in most of the context to, to see that connection happening and uh, be confronted by uh, unfamiliar material and um, amplify your self-trust, actually. Uh, and that, and then be be able to 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 hope to hope that that we can support each other uh, with all the various resources resources that we have it can be money can be a psychological support can be the camera that I have and I don't use every day you know uh, or somebody you know that reminds you of your work uh, all of that uh, that that keeps us uh, creating bridges. Oh, we can't hear you, Karima. You're mute. You're, you're not loud enough. I'm not loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> All this is serendipity and it means something. I was like, when you said trust issues, it's usually the opposite. It's not trusting, not being able to trust. So talking about tr trusting too much. And it's about trusting the process has been said by, by some of the delegates and letting go. But that cannot happen if we don't trust the self and trust the other. So um, I, I don't know, Arif, if, if your sound is better, but, um, and there comes something that you've been talking a lot about, which is, which is uh, the love. Um, how, how does love bring in that trust? How can we get to this unconditional love? To be able to trust the other um, is really when we have experienced this unconditional love. I'm loved because for who I am, um, not because what I can do, not because what I possess, not because what I know, not what I be, how much money I have, but I am a human being with all this potential, this creative potential. So I, how do you connect this love in love into all this that has been shared right now? Okay, uh, you hear me, Karima? Mm -hmm. I think the sound is now better way better like when i explain uh, the love the love is not just a word the l-o-v-e love the love is a disturbed where we uh, dwell to write the love is the inspiration that guides us that we, we won't have that barrier when there is love there is god and god is everything and when i say god i mean like uh, to the smallest grain, to the stars, to everything. We say love. Love has no color, has no, has no, no limitless love. But we want to build Africa. This the plan of this love. We we, we want to have a bright future, but. For that, we know that the children are the leaders of tomorrow. So we facilitate workshops. We facilitate. We uh, we give voice. We, we give voice, and we connect to Africa like uh, the faith. Going actually, you see uh, many different countries 
different area, east, west, north, Africa. Like we have here this opportunity to connect to Morocco, uh, Botswana, Nigeria, uh, Australia. There's something beautiful. There's something beautiful. Imagine the, the kids, they connect like we connect. We will have a bright future. That's what I mean in love. What I mean in love is like uh, uh, genderless, genderless. We, we, we use poetry to disrupt, to disrupt uh, this, uh, this, this top pattern. You know, we want to evolve. We want to see a world that uh, uh, we will change. Okay, Arif, the sound is starting to go. At the same time, we have we starting to struggle with a bit with the sound. And at the same time, I've just been reminded that we in the last fifteen minutes, I'm amazed how fast this has gone. Do you? I, I'm just going to let you just each one of you decide where you want to go. Um, Ron, Ronian, you to, you said something quite quite that really uh, resonated very strongly with me. What would happen if we have in our education systems we let go, like the in a way that you've been saying? What what happens if uh, like the, what we were telling Oscar that um, there's no longer borders between technology, physics, science, art, and it all comes together and we discover them through that space, that in between uh, of all these different fields. Um, so uh, let, let's try to, what does that mean as far as how our systems can evolve, how our societies can evolve to be able to leave those borders? And also what are the challenges? So let's bring, let's bring both to under, to, what are the challenges that, that uh, the, um, in this process, but also how could it manifest in our societies? What would be transcended then? Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, education is, is one of my passions too, and, and particularly bringing arts into, into the educative spaces. I think that we would start to dismin diminish some of the assumptions that um, subjects like maths and science need to be preferenced in front of art because they will bring us progress. Uh, teaching a child to play a musical instrument will, in fact, we know this scientifically, improve their ability in maths and science. So th these things are myths and they generate fear and assumptions in us that we can't do certain things. Um, and. And I think that, that if we can start to dissolve those assumptions in children, where they can begin to understand that they have capacities that are enormous and that, you know, I, one of the experiences, and, and I think Oscar, you will probably uh, have, have experienced a similar thing for me is that, um, that then I have, is that when we, often bring artists and scientists into the same spaces. There's a language problem. There's a kind of a, um, even though we're speaking the same tongue, we're using different words and different jargons to try to get to an end result. And what I've experienced too often is that artists then view the, the creative technologist, the programmer, the writer of the, of the script, um, as a kind of a techie and they don't tap into the human potential of this person to pursue a concept that both of us don't perhaps know. Um, but similarly, uh, you know, tech technologists might see the artist as the person who's kind of going to make this pretty and going to create a veneer. And when those are the two dynamics, because essentially there's an attempt to collaborate, but people are still sitting in their silos. Um, and, and trying to sort of translate. We get a lot of work that is unsurprising, derivative, rep repetitive, and, and just sort of not particularly authentic. Um, and that's just from an art perspective. I suspect that if we were given more time with one another to collapse the, the barriers that we have in language, to immerse ourselves 
in each other as people and I think you know resonating with a reef and to bring that intimacy and that love to a situation where there's a there's a real appreciation for the fact that an artist and a technologist are in the room at the same time pursuing something that neither of them know but that can be discovered and that's that's you know I, I've made a note of your French philosopher and that in between space it's such a beautiful description a vivid description of what some of the things we've been discovering at the center but also some of the things we suspect might happen if this kind of thinking infiltrates into school systems and um, where where music is becomes a key form in within maths education for example I love the dissolving the assumptions of children, whereas systems really bring in the, the assumptions. Children do not have initial assumptions. So it's, and, and, and that is all the challenge, not to be in the way. Um, uh, Fatih, uh, Julia, Oscar, Arif, uh, what is a challenge? What is a challenge? that you might find. And what does this process mean, could mean for our society? If we are able to find the courage to go there, we have very little time, um, but I don't know who would like to take the flow from Bronwyn and, um, and resonate with it. Exactly. No, no, there's Oscar. You seem to be wanting Arif, Oscar. Okay, I thought I thought Arif was going to jump in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the challenges that you know immediately come to mind, which I believe can be resolved, also is um, a delivery mechanism. Um, I I I've, I've seen that people sometimes struggle to understand certain kinds of art and assimilate it um, in the way that the artist intended. Um, I even struggled. I remember the first time I went to Ars Electronica, I, it didn't really make so much sense to me, but you know, much later I was like, oh, this is what they're trying to express. Oh, they're trying to question society's way of doing things or and uh, inequality and things like that. So um, also, I might also accuse artists of also being in their own silos too and in their own bubble. So I think both, like you said, that in between space. So how can I make it in such a way that it's not just me alone that understands what I'm trying to express, but it's a language that crosses that silo um, that I am in, that border that I am in, uh, then it's more like a reaching out with a handshake, like, hey, I want you to understand what I'm doing, um, instead of, you know, my little club and my own space. Same thing for um, technologists and people from different fields. I really love that philosophy of in-between space, like, okay, we're going to drop and collapse all our assumptions. I want you to understand what I'm doing. You want me to understand. And then it's an actual um, exchange um, of value and of, 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 of inner thought. Um, the next thing after delivery mechanism is that I think the way to continually foster this kind of um, um, idea, ideas and ideology is that the whole multidisciplinary and um, cross-cutting movement should really continue and in a way that is more inter interdisciplinary than multidisciplinary. Um, I don't know if I've lost you or if my network has gone. No, 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 you're with us. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so uh, interdisciplinary. In other words, so if I have a biological scientist, a visual artist, a musician, and a technologist together, you know, yes, you are a biologist, a scientist, but that, that ends at the door. As you're coming in, it's for one common good and one common collaboration. So I think those two 
um, thoughts, interdisciplinary, more of interdisciplinary than multidisciplinary and delivery mechanism is, is um, one way to foster, you know, this kind of um, ideologies that we're talking about. Thank you, Oscar. We are in our final five minutes. I would ask you, please, if you don't mind putting your cameras on so that we can all come back together at this point. Thank you very much. I'm feeling very emotional. I thought uh, by the depth of what has been shared and um, I felt that it was really a space of expression of our humanity, transcending um, anything that, uh, as Rumi says, uh, our job is not to bring in love, but to take the barriers that we've been putting in our hearts to stop it from being expressed. And I have the feeling, and this is what, what very strong feeling that this is what's happening here. I would like to ask you all, you, you, we started off with the word and from the word to the story and from the story to maybe a new story that can be created here, imagining societies differently, without silos, without uh, borders, without rules, without dogmas. What would that mean? What would we look like? Uh, what would, would be this intimacy, this form of intimacy that we would learn to create? Um, I'd like to finish with a word, and this time to be able to read those words. What do you take? What is that word? that stays with you, that resonates. And I'll ask also the ones who are following this, this, this conversation, this experience that we are co-creating together to share it on Facebook if possible. What are the words? Because if we bring on all these words, they have no end and no beginning. They can tell so many new stories, depending on who reads them and which order we read them. But there will be something that is confluent, something that is connecting, and it is our shared humanity. So what is that word? And please do share it. Let's take a little moment together to share it. Let's speak the word and louder. So we have boundless, we have in between, we have wonder. We have resonating. Neither includes or excludes I love that. Resonating, fertile, love, light, nebulous, strings, peace, revolution, one, compassion, purpose, acceptance, heritage, Love and capital, eruption, immortality, courage, resonance, one, intimacy, humanity, passion, disrupting and disobedience. But the this is going to the trans, identity. And I'd like to ask, what happens when hope kicks in, when love kicks in, when healing comes, kicks in, with curiosity? What happened to that identity that is being the same? What moves? How do we go from identity to intimacy? Curiosity, birth, kindness. Thank you all very, very much for sharing this moment with us. And um, I think the time has passed, this convergence and connection. Um, we've come to the end. And I will give the, I thank you all so much for co creating this moment and for sharing it with us and for creating this moment of intimacy. Um, Erin, um, you can take it from here. Yes, thank you so much, Karima and panel. What another great conversation. Uh, of course, uh, apologies for some of the technical issues that occur that just is part of the game, unfortunately, that we're facing. Uh, and hence, again, I want to just shout out to all of you 
speakers and panelists uh, of this week uh, uh, for your courage and 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 patience uh, in being with us because again we had uh, quite a lot of people also engaging with us on other platforms besides uh, zoom we realize that uh, particularly on the continent sometimes for people zoom is not the the best option um so really fantastic thank you so much uh without further ado i am gonna ask everybody to turn their cameras off again and also uh, to be muted uh, because we have our creative intervention artist with us, uh, our final creative intervention, uh, Shigun, uh, you are here with us, with your entire troupe from Nigeria. Uh, I would say, Shigun, please take it away. And unmute, unmute. Thank <laughs> you. 
today. I hope, say, you don't they pack your bags. Go back. You don't try, okay? Your harvest, na helele. See, as you turn tears to Akamu, you turn fear to my moi. I beg, people don't fail a fool. Coronavirus. Tell mother self, say we don't hear, make you no know vex, even though she get prison to para. Tell and say we say we no say we no get sex. We don't effort. And this Kokoko virus, now a bone get one, make she pity your Hey!
Shagun and the Crown Troop. Bravo, bravo. Thank you so much for that wonderful creative uh, intervention. Thank you. Um, really lovely. If we can all just give them a quick hand of applause. Woo! All right. <laughs> Bravo. Uh, before Bravo. Uh, I let you all go, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, we are going, we are having a short break right now. And then this afternoon, we have our speed dating session uh, in AirMeet. So this is not on Zoom, it is in the AirMeet platform. However, if for any reason things are going uh, awry in there, um, please be on the lookout in your emails if you're registered, uh, if we have to move to Zoom just in case. But I think it will work well. The speed dating session doesn't mean that you are all going to speed date. It actually means that at the tables in the AirMeet platform, and I'm, not, I'm sure a lot of you have now experienced the platform, um, there will be an artist at each table pitching their idea. And so the delegates just join a table. I will ask you to please 
spread out over the six tables or seven tables that are there so that there are at least three or four people at each table. Uh, and then the delegates stay seated at each table while the artists hop from one table to the next. And it's every time a 10 minute pitch. So this is also a great way for artists to learn the art of pitching. Um, so they'll get to pitch five or six times to different people uh, and different delegates at these tables. So when you join us at three o'clock, please just move to a table and you can start a conversation already. Uh, just wait a few minutes and I'll uh, again come to you all and explain right there again how it all works. But uh, just so you know, don't worry, you're not going to speed date yourself. It is an artist going to pitch to you. It is in the AirMeet platform, which is best experienced on a computer and uh, in the Chrome, uh, in Chrome. Um, so hopefully we will all see you back there. Uh, I just wanna do a, a shout out to all our panels this week and, and to all the creative interventions. I mean, we started in Senegal with uh, a beautiful dance piece. Uh, then we went to uh, South Africa uh, where we were drawing our faces and creating sound, intervention soundscapes of our drawings. Uh, we had Circus Zambia uh, on uh, joining us in uh, with the circus element that uh, this is the first time we had circus uh, in, in Pace. And he is also one of our tour ready artists. So you can meet him later on in the lounge. And then yesterday we had our beautiful say your name, say our name stories, the stories of our names. And then today this fantastic celebration uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, Lagos, from Nigeria. Uh, and yesterday was from Kenya. So I just wanted to say what a fantastic uh, week and creative interventions we have been having. Um, please, all of you that are here and that are listening on Facebook, please interact. Uh, a point of action, try to go to the website and connect with three people you don't know. Just send them a message. And then today in the afternoon in our lounge, uh, tell about who you met uh, these, uh, these days. Um, so an action plan is please connect with somebody you haven't known yet. Um, also, let us know if uh, there are any shadow or residency opportunities for our producers lab people, for our new voices, for these artists. If you are listening in from other places in the world and you are really getting excited about this space, let us know what opportunities there are. And I would also say, make sure that going forward in any festival, in any platform, whatever it is you do, make sure you have the voice of the continent with you. Um, it is really important, it is one of the prime reasons we started this platform is to make sure that the voice of the African continent is included everywhere we now are celebrating the arts and are having these kind of conversations. So if you are listening, that's kind of the call to action for everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. We will see you back at three o'clock in the AirMeet platform, not on Zoom, but for, if for any reason something goes wrong, just be on the lookout for the WhatsApp group and the email uh, that uh, there might be a Zoom link being sent to you. And then later today, uh, at 4.45 p.m. Uh, South African time, we have our final online lounge. And I really wanna encourage everybody to be there. I know it's a, a pain in the ass that you can't join from a mobile phone, but please be with us in the final lounge today to meet the tour ready artists and to have a final celebratory ending of what has been five amazing days. So also all panelists, please join us in, uh, in the uh, Air Meet Lounge today. Thank you again. I think that's about it. Uh, and